In this video, we're going to define polar, cylindrical, and spherical coordinates. So our learning goals are to be able to define polar, cylindrical, and spherical coordinates, and to construct and identify graphs in those coordinate systems. So the first set should be a review of polar coordinates. Um, recall that when you describe points using polar coordinates, the first set of the ordered pair gives the radial coordinate, which is the same thing as the distance from the point to the origin. And the second component is the angular coordinate, which is the angle that the point makes with the x-axis. So, for example, let's look at the point 3 pi over 4 written in polar coordinates. The first component tells us that the distance from the point to the origin is 3 units, and that the angle that's made with the x-axis is pi over 4. So if I were to sketch a graph of this, I would trace out an angle of pi over 4. And typically, we give this angular coordinate in radians. We don't use degrees. Um, and I would want to go out a distance of 1, 2, 3 units. So in polar coordinates, this is the point 3 pi over 4. How would we convert this back to figure out what the coordinates would be in xy coordinates? Well we're going to have to use right triangle geometry to be able to figure out this distance x and the height y. Notice that because this is a right triangle, if I write triangle, um, this is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that means that the cosine of pi over 4 is going to be equal to x over the radius, or the hypotenuse in this case, which is husband 3. Or in other words, that means that 3 times the cosine of pi over 4 is equal to x. The cosine of pi over 4 is square root 2 over 2. So in this case, x is equal to 3 square root 2 over 2. Similarly, the distance in the y direction is going to be the sine of the angle pi over 4 is equal to y over 3, or 3 to hypotenuse, which yields the fact that, oh, this is, this is really sloppy notation down here. I shouldn't have written this. Um, oh, this is fine. Oh, this is fine. It just means that y in this case is going to be 3 times the sine of pi over 4, which is 3 times the square root of 2 over 2. So this point in polar coordinates, would be rewritten as 3 times the square root of 2 over 2, comma, 3 times the square root of 2 over 2 in rectangular coordinates. Let's look at another example where we're working backwards. Let's say that we're given a point in rectangular coordinates that's at the point 2, 3, in terms of x and y. And we want to figure out what this is in polar coordinates. The easiest way is, again, to use triangle geometry. First, we have to figure out what this radius value, r, is equal to. And we know that by Pythagorean theorem, r is going to be equal to the square root of the length squared times the height squared, which is 2 squared, plus 3 squared, which is equal to the square root of 4 plus 9, or in this case, the square root of 13. So that's what our r value is. Then we have to determine what our theta value is. And notice that we can't use the smaller angle theta, but for polar coordinates, theta always represents the angle that's made with the x-axis. So in this case, we could do multiple steps of triangle geometry to be able to figure out what this angle theta is equal to. The first step in our triangle geometry is to figure out what the complementary angle to theta would be. I'll label that angle C. And in this case, we know that the height here is 3 and the length here is 2. So that means that for our angle C, the tangent of C is adjacent over hypotenuse, or in this case, 2 over 3. Notice I'm ignoring the sign. I'm thinking of this as a length. 
so I don't care that it's a negative 2. Or in other words, that C is going to be the inverse tangent of 2 thirds. And I could plug that into a calculator and get a decimal approximation of the radians. But that's not good enough, right? Because that's what this angle B is, and I want to know what this angle theta is. And in this case, the angle theta is going to be pi minus C, because pi is this 180 degrees. So theta, which is equal to the half circle pi minus C, is going to be given in radians by pi minus the inverse tangent of two thirds. So one thing to note here, or to be conscious of, is the fact that I need to use the geometry of the rectangular coordinate system to determine which angle is which. That just blanket saying that the angle is given by the tangent is not going to be good enough. We have to pay attention to the sign and also which, uh, which quadrant the point lies in. But in this case, I would give my messy coordinates as square root 13 for my r, and pi minus the inverse tangent of two-thirds for my coordinate theta. Notice that this actually isn't the only option. If I wanted to, I could actually think of this as a distance of negative three. This is something that's allowable within polar geometry, in which case I could visualize myself as going a distance of negative c degrees and then backwards r units. So this point is exactly the same as the point negative square root 13, thinking of moving backwards square root 13 units, while pointing in the angled direction negative c, which in this case, remember c is inverse tangent, so this is just the negative of uh, the inverse tangent of two-thirds. The important idea here is that polar coordinates have multiple different, uh, um, different algebraic written notation can represent the same exact point. That's not true in rectangular coordinates. We just have a single x value and a single y value, whereas this point and this point are exactly the same. And similarly, I could take this exact same coordinate, negative square root 13, as my distance, traveling backwards square root 13, and I could take this angle measure and add 2 pi to it, because 2 pi just means going around in a full circle. Again, this angle measure is different. I've gone 2 pi's worth around the circle to get to this, but they would all measure the same point.